I'm Firest, and welcome back for another Skyforge class guide. This guide is a beginner's guide to the Cryomancer class. The Cryomancer is one of the three base starting classes that are available to new players. Many people start with the Cryo because she is a ranged damage dealing and crowd control class whose skills tend to make solo questing a little bit easier in the early game. While she does get some emergency spells a little bit later, she is the only class that doesn't have a shield from the beginning, but this doesn't mean that she's totally defenseless. Before we get to the class abilities, let's briefly examine some important elements of the game's user interface. At the bottom of the screen you'll find two big bars. The top red bar is your health bar. You die if this gets down to zero. There's no real penalty in this game aside from having to walk back from the last save point or portal. Your health bar will heal back up to full exponentially when you leave combat, and you can tell when you're out of combat when your character puts away their weapon. Health can also be restored by running over life globes dropped by enemies. The bottom blue bar is your class energy bar. You can think of it as mana or magic points from other games. Each class calls this bar something different, and some classes interact with them differently. Cryomancer's cryogen bar works pretty much like a traditional mana bar. Most abilities will cost a certain amount of cryogen, but the bar refills steadily by itself, even in combat. To the right of these bars you'll find a box with a little guy running with a number next to it. This is your dash counter. Dashing in this game helps you avoid danger and can get you out of bad places fast, but you're limited by this resource. Anytime you dash by double tapping a directional key, or shift plus direction, you'll use one of these counters. As you use a counter, a reset bar will begin to fill and add one counter every time it fills up to your max number of dashes. This starts with a maximum of three. Above the dash box, you can see a lightning bolt box on my screen. You won't have this box yet if you're brand new to the game, but you'll acquire this very early in your character's development. This is called Impulse Charge. You could think of it as a guaranteed damage boost that only works on certain abilities. If you hit the P button, it'll bring up your character screen with the stats on the right side. If you mouse over Spirit, it will show you that this stat increases impulse damage. In the green box, you can see what the current value of your impulse damage boost is. If the box has a number in it, the impulse charge is ready. The next ability that can trigger impulse charge will have this bonus added to it, and the impulse charge will begin to regenerate. Some abilities benefit from impulse charge more than others. For example, Icy Dart will leave a damage over time effect on the target. If this ability was cast with an impulse charge ready, the dot damage will also be boosted. When you start out as a Cryomancer, you have four abilities and an execute move. Your left click ability is called Shattered Storm. Your crystal will shoot out a small ice ball at your target. This is your basic spammable ranged attack. It'll do roughly 50% of your base damage per shot. It's an instant ability with no timed cooldown. It also requires no cryogen to be used. So use this when you're out of cryogen or filling a short period of time when waiting for impulse charge or other ability cooldowns to reset. The right click ability is called Icy Missile. Well, that's actually more of a group name. There are actually two base abilities here on one button. The base ability is called Icy Thorn. Your crystal will charge up and propel forward a little bit before shooting an ice ball at your target. This ability is an instant cast that has no cooldown, but costs 50 cryogen. This ability will do about 1.8 times base damage. Icy Thorn can trigger impulse charge. Now if you hold down left click, you'll see a yellow charge bar appear above your health bar. While charging, you can still walk, but at a slower pace and you can also hold on to this until you're ready to let it go. As you hold the left click down, your crystal spins and gains power, finally forming a giant ice spear that's launched at your target. This overcharged icy thorn is called icy dart. This ability has no cooldown and only costs the 50 cryogen that the icy thorn already cost you to channel up to this point. Like icy thorn, icy dart can trigger impulse charge. Icy dart does about the same amount of damage as icy thorn, but it leaves a damage over time effect on the target that ticks for damage every second for the next 8 seconds. The damage over time increases every tick until it falls off. This damage is based off the initial direct damage caused by the icy dart. If the initial dart damage crit, the ticking damage will be higher. If the dart triggered impulse charge, the ticks will also be boosted. Keeping this constant damage effect on the target at all times is important to maximizing damage on larger targets. Note: Individual ticks of the dot can crit, and you can overwrite your own dot. The game doesn't care how strong the current dot is. The new application of the dot will overwrite the old one because it will have a full effect timer. So remember to let the damage either fall off or try to time your next dart to land very close to the end of the dot with impulse charge up if possible. The fourth ability you start with is called Glacial Fangs. This is your first crowd control slash defensive ability and it's bound to the number one key. This ability shoots out a short frontal range cone of ice that does right around base damage 
to nearby enemy targets. Anything hit by this ability will have cryonic suspension applied to them. Basically, it paralyzes and silences the target in place for 2.5 seconds. As you can tell, this is helpful in putting some distance between you and angry enemies that are in your face. This ability is an instant cast on a 30 second cooldown and costs 90 cryogen to cast. Finally, you have your execute slash finisher move called Northern Breeze. Wait, Northern Breeze? What kind of wussy name is that for an execution? All classes have a finisher that has a 20 second cooldown between uses, but they're unique to each class in appearance and effect. The Cryomancer's finisher has an icy tomb in case the low hit point enemy dealing fatal damage. This ability is cryogen free and instant, but you have to pay attention to use it. When an enemy target is in range with a certain low percentage of hit points remaining and your finisher is off cooldown, an E notification will pop up right next to your character. Just follow directions, hit the E key, and the animation will start and kill the enemy. As a side effect, the Cryomancer's Execute also awards an instant 25 cryogen regeneration to your bar. Now if this Cryomancer is your first character, you'll start out on the Danka Island region. Regions are large open roam areas with mini quests in different areas of the map. These quests link together to form a larger quest line of the area. While you work through these quests, you'll be rewarded with Sparks of Destruction. They're red looking hex cut crystals. I'll explain what they're used for later, but for now, you'll notice that you're rewarded with a new ability when you receive these. This will happen twice in this region. The first time, you will be awarded Icy Comet. This ability is bound to the number 3 key and drops a huge ice chunk on the head of your target, dealing nearly twice base damage to your target and any other enemies within 8 yards of that target. This attack will also put the intense cooling debuff on enemies hit. This effect is basically a snare that reduces movement speed. Icy Comet is an instant cast ability with a 10 second cooldown and costs a whopping 150 cryogen. That's half your cryogen bar. You used to be able to start the animation, then dash, breaking the animation, so that you could use your next ability quicker, but that's been patched recently, so now you need to complete the whole animation for the Ice Comet to drop. The second time you get Sparks of Destruction, you'll be awarded Ice Statue. This ability is bound to the number 4 button. When used, your character jumps backwards and creates an icy statue of you that attracts the attention of enemies that were close when it was made. So this is kind of like a taunting dummy. The statue will have 70% of your base HP and apply stacks of intense cooling, the snare, until the enemies are frozen in place with an effect called Icebound. The statue will last for 10 seconds if not destroyed. If you hit the ability button again while the statue is up, it'll explode doing base damage to nearby targets and applying cryonic suspension the immobilization silence for 2.5 seconds. This is an instant cast ability with a 35 second cooldown and cost 100 cryogen. Let's touch briefly on stats. Might is found on your main weapon, your crystal. This increases the minimum and maximum base damage. Stamina is found on your secondary weapon, your crystal frame, and this increases your hit points. Depending on who you listen to, there's a bunch of different ways that you can stack your cryomancer. Most people suggest stacking either Might and Luck or Valor and Luck. Finally, let's circle back on how the Sparks of Destruction we looted gave us these two new abilities. Sometime soon after you finish up on Dankin Island, you'll meet with Flavius in the Research Center. He will unlock the Ascension Atlas. Each class has their own separate atlas with nodes that unlock stat bonuses as well as abilities and talents. All atlases have a starting point. This is where we started off on Dankin Island. When you looted the Sparks of Destruction, the game automatically spent them to unlock this first note, which unlocked the Icy Comet ability. This happened a second time a bit later, and it auto unlocked the Ice Statue ability. If you look at the bottom here, you can see that there are a few different types of sparks. Working right to left, we have Blue Sparks of Balance, the Green Sparks of Creation, Red Sparks of Destruction, and the Snowflake looking Sparks of Cold. You'll gain the ability to loot Sparks of Cold after you unlock the Path of the Cryomancer node. After that point, all nodes will cost Sparks of Cold. Way up on the upper right, we find Sparks of Evolution. These gold sparks are wildcard sparks that can be used for any class Atlas node requirement and can be used in combination with other sparks if you're short. So to progress your character along, you continue to unlock nodes along this path. To unlock a node, you have to have access to it via a currently unlocked node, and you need to fulfill the spark requirement for that node. For example, this node, required 50 green sparks of creation to unlock. Any stat upgrade you unlock in a class atlas is applied to your character in general, regardless of what class you currently are using. 
Well, with that, you should be at least pointed in the right direction to becoming a successful cryomancer. I hope you've enjoyed and learned a little something from this guide and all my other Skyforge guides. If you want to see those guides, click the video on the left here. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click the snowflake on the right here. Please leave any questions, comments, or suggestions you have down below, and remember to share and like this video. Until next time, happy hunting.